we consume 50 billion tons of sand every year, enough to cover the Philippines 5 inches deep. It is the most consumed resource behind water, air, and oil. It is finite, precious, and increasingly endangered resource on which man's civilization depends. It is not renewable for the next 200 million years, and the world is running out of sand. Man is 0.01% of Earth's biomass, exists for only 3.8 seconds of the 24 hour of the 40.5 billion years of planetary existence. Man is insignificant in numbers, but causes irreversible damage that will lead to the sixth major mass extinction, the Anthropocene. COVID-19 global pandemic is just the start. Sustainability's good intentions are outweighed by the bad. It saves very little but continuously destroys good lands. By 2050, the world population, projected at 10 billion, will use the same resources we saved now. It will never be enough. We consume our resources faster than they can recover. We cannot pursue an infinite progress based on our finite resources. We can cover the world with lead certified buildings, but will never improve our Earth's health. Almost 90% of buildings are built from extracted resources like sand, cement, steel, and glass. We destroy one environment after another, yet we call it green building. This is not sustainable. When we build these kinds, who benefits the most and who suffers? We need to regenerate before we sustain. Maca Forest Villa in Alfonso Cavite is the face of regeneration. We promote ancient wisdom and frugal innovations. We shifted the paradigm of unlearning the destructive way of living and relearning by reconnecting with the patterns and rhythms of nature, making simple living simple again. We see nature the way we want to see it and not as they are. Correcting this grave mistake, we co-thrive and give the same respect to beautiful birds equally to ugly and creepy arthropods. We celebrate our imperfections, incompleteness, and impermanence as nature is ever evolving. The global pandemic gave us an important chance to correct our mistakes. Human-centric structures, no matter how iconic, won't be able to save humanity. We are doing things wrong. Instead of being human-centric, we need to recognize the importance of other life forms and start shifting to ecocentric living because all lives matter. Indigenous people comprise 5% of the global population, taking care of 85% of the world's biodiverse land, while 95% of the so-called civilized, modern, and intelligent man solution to the climate crisis is green and sustainability. There is a stark difference in how disconnected and ignorant we are of our environment, unlike the people whom we called primitive. We cannot pursue our destructive ways of living. A new mindset is all we need. I will be presenting Maka's frugal innovation and the good lessons learned from our past, the old ways of doing new things, and the new ways of doing the old things bearing particular focus on raw earth construction. This handful of soil contains 100 billion microorganisms, a microbial network of life that will extend to 50 kilometers. 95% of all our food comes from the soil. It needs to be protected. But we are abusing the very resource that is giving us life. The same soil under our feet used in the past as ramp earth walls by our ancestors is resurging at Maca Forest Villa. It is 88% dirt available anywhere. It is cheap, strong, healthy, and sensitive to Earth's health. A simple jar test was conducted to get the right soil at the right place. Jar 1 showed a 90% sandy soil, while Jar 3 showed 95% of clay soil. All of these soil types will have specific benefits 
depending on use and stabilization technique. Our main goal is to develop alternative materials for locals to follow. It should be cheap and available on the site. Get the subsoil part, not the topsoil nor the parent rock. You will see different layers of colors and we happen to get yellow and black. We separate the gravelly and stony soil for layer accents. We reuse the concrete debris from previous road widening thrown in our roadside. Use it as our footing of 400 millimeters to 600 millimeters deep to evenly distribute the load of rammed earth wall. We use any material possible available on the site from forms, clumps, bar support, and bamboo as reinforcements. The rammed earth wall measures 500 millimeter thick with a height of 1.80 meters and a length of 4.5 meters. With a mixture of one bag of cement, 60% sandy soil and 40% clay soil, the soil has to be moistened by 23 to 25 liters of water or sometimes even less, depending on the moisture content until sticky enough to band. This is the next day result after removing the forms. As it dry up, the wall revealed the earth's natural color. Tamping manually gave us the varying coarseness on texture and the more satisfying layers of dirt. It is a rare beauty only nature can give. We decided not to seal the earth to monitor its reaction on a high humid micro weather of Alfonso Cavite. You will see beautiful moss growing. It is alive and breathing. Non-contaminants to our land a perfect material indeed. We start building an unstabilized round earth wall with a width of 500 millimeters and a height of 1.5 meters where we will locate our steam bath. The gray layer has a different mix, apparently having greater amount of cement, creating stronger contrast with a yellow sandy clay soil. We left the rammed earth wall again without sealing to monitor its response on weathering. Constant rain and high humidity micro weather penetrates on the pores and started to grow moss and eventually ferns. This is how it looks like after six months the wall is alive and breathing. Now we are ready to build our prime unit with the loft highlighted by a six meter tall reinforced rammed earth wall reaching all the way to slab soffit. Unlike the other parts of the land, the soil available on this spot is clayey. As you can see from our jar test that the clayey soil is about 98%, but we want to try it out and respond how we can deal with the clay rammed earth. We reinforced with 10 millimeter rebars and increased the percentage of cement to 12%. The result is astounding. You can see from each layers a beautiful texture visible only from thousands to millions of years of geological formations. This time, it is made by a man. And so we are now ready to share it to the world, most importantly to the common Tao, who just wishes to have a simple house. Oh, did I mention that the best part, it is significantly cheaper by 60%. Our mix is on its way to secure a patent. Raw earth sourced within the site was also used on pavement, flooring, and earthen plaster. You will see the coolness of the material. It breathes. The dining hall, once a heap of chicken manure and hay, was built with earthen floor. No steel reinforcement with 8% cement mix it actually withstood 800 tremors in 2020 during the Ta'al eruption. It actually becomes an adobe part of the soil. It is amazing to discover the different colors of the soil. Eventually, we want to colorize our rammed earth layers accentuated with varying protruding rock, gravel, or pebble textures. Earthen plasters gave our walls a natural, imperfect wabi-sabi aesthetics. It helped our visitors to rethink the paradigm of their polished and painted walls. It brings us closer and more connected to nature. 
oftentimes praised, the indoor temperature is surprisingly cool. Earthen wall breathes. It gives off healthy minerals instead of inhaling the chemicals from the concrete and artificial color coatings. This soft adobe wall came from adobe blocks within the area, once binded together with cement soil mortar and bamboo reinforcement it becomes sturdy, suitable for a single story house. We learned this technique from a local worker from Laurel Batangas and this is how they build their house. We copied how the rivers trap water. This bio pool is made of clay excavated from the same spot. Thermite mound soil was used as waterproofing and charcoal acting as an antibacterial agent. It has no steel reinforcement and used only an 8% mix of cement that cost 2,200 pesos. The rest of materials are free. River stones from the nearby creek, the wood trellis scribed on boulders are soft wood such as binunga, ibig, kakawate, and mahogany. Indeed, a jugad or frugal innovation. The poorest of the poor can now enjoy their own pool. I was amazed to learn that the inside coating of our ancestor's clay jar or tapayan has a coating of charcoal. It actually acts as an antibacteria. Using the old ways of doing new things, we mix the charcoal with clay and termitarium to cleanse our water. By giving the right slope, its own geometry stabilizes the water pressure. In addition, making the clay cover of at least minimum thickness of 200 millimeters does the trick, which perfectly worked. What used to be the rich who can afford to construct a pool, an ordinary one can now enjoy to bask on this clean, clear water just for the price of 2,200 pesos, which is the price of cement, and the rest is free. We built a heated tub, onsen inspired using the same mix, all day from the floor to the walls. Specifically, we only get the Los Banos termite species, which became our good friend. Just harvest the termite mound soil, leave the queen in peace, and you will have continuous supply again on the coming weeks. Heated off-grid using a rocket stove system, our solid waste, twigs and dry leaves are used as burning fuel and turned into briquettes. The heat produced burning the fuel is used to kin dry our DIY glue lamp timber in which I greatly hope to present at the next conference. It is amazing to learn also that the clay and stone absorb and retains the heat for up to three days. Surely, it is a relaxing experience. We build more and more infiltration ponds to gather storm water to replenish our water table and aquifers instead of throwing it away for drainage. It also develops a new ecosystem strengthening further our site's biodiversity. Frogs, draco lizard, and swarms of dragonflies are a sight to behold. Equipped with a biofiltration system, layers of charcoal, pebbles, and gravels, cleanse and aerate our water. You will see birds roosting, circling around the charred bridge, which is a Japanese ancient technique that deters pests and most especially termites. Six months had passed. I saw plants growing on my rammed earth. It is breathing. I have succeeded. At the end of its life, even for 200 years, you can destroy and bring it back to the ground. Plants will still grow. We left the fake complex lifestyle of the metro and started the regenerative living, making simple living simple again. We want significance. We do not need another iconic building. We need a serious architecture that heals our wounded earth. Let us roam the earth, restore the lost planetude, and regenerate.